In this video, we're going to go over why you need more than just rotation to throw hard. Throw hard on a mound, throw hard from a field. It's also going to relate to hitting, but I'm just going to focus on throwing or pitching. If you haven't subscribed, you know, subscribe to us, follow us. A lot more good information that we're going to put out to you like we do all the time. And if you want to learn more about us, topvelocity.net. Uh, if you want to see more of our training products, topvelocity.com. But the, the lesson today is, is it's not just rotation. The lesson today is what other aspects of movement can help us increase performance, also reduce risk of injury. And it's learning that it's more than just rotation. I think that's the biggest fallacy is that throwing is a rotational movement. Rotation is a part of it, but it would be more accurate saying it's a curve linear movement. So what's curve linear? Curve linear means it's not just a perfect circle, right? Rotation angular just wants to rotate. Curve linear means it's a curve into a straight line, right? So it's like adding a straight line to a, a circle or a half circle. So for example, if I, if I just purely create a rotational movement, this is all it would be. I'd be like a, a tire, a fan, whatever, just purely rotating. Notice that the axis, the center point where it rotates, wouldn't, doesn't move. So like a helicopter, right? It's just rotating in one stationary static position. <clears throat> That's not how you're going to throw hard. You're never going to throw hard without creating what we call momentum, taking the axis point and creating momentum to add to the rotating movement. At the end of the day, we are going to rotate. We're going to use rotation. It helps. There's a sequence of rotation through the body that gets to the spin of the wrist at the end, which is really important how the ball spins out of your hand. So we do need rotation. But just purely rotating, like a helicopter, where the axis point is static and not moving, isn't going to allow us to optimize velocity. So that's where it has to be more curved linear. So instead of just doing this when we throw, we want to do this, right? So our rotation is adding to the linear energy, or what we say complementing. So we're going to take the access point, and we're going to make sure the access point is moving towards the target as we go, or before we go into rotation. So to create it, to get rotation to be directional, because in the, the day, rotation's direction is just around and around and around. So if I'm going to rotate and stop, I'm more likely going to rotate off axis. If I'm going to rotate and stop on axis or where I want to throw, it's, it's barely going to be much range of motion to create acceleration. And I'm not going to be like a shot putter and keep rotating, keep spinning, and then stop. The better way to do it is to take the axis point and move it forward and then release rotation to complement the linear direction. Okay, So that's what we've found and the studies show when we want to throw hard, that's the optimal way to throw hard. But you hear this argument that we should just rotate. So what happens is everyone just starts spinning the legs, spinning the trunk, and trying to find the time to, to release the ball. When they need to learn how to delay rotation, create momentum, move the axis point or the center of mass towards the target, and then unleash rotation to complement that and to where it all merges together, that's the optimal way of doing it. So, you know, you could see it. If you, have a, if you had a pitching delivery, and we'll see what it looks like, or throwing delivery, that was just purely rotational, you'd pretty much be like right out of the gate just spinning and throwing. You wouldn't see a stride. You wouldn't see any movement of the trunk to move forward. All those are linear movements. So when some says throwing's rotation, rotational, then that means that person's not striding. That means that person's not moving their trunk forward. So if there's a stride in there, and if there's a trunk going forward in there, that is not a rotational delivery. That's a more curved linear delivery or a linear to rotational delivery. So at the end of the day, if you're really believing that, you know what, I do need a more linear to rotational delivery, then I need to learn how they work together. I need to learn how to optimize the linear energy and then the rotational energy. And there's really only one way to do that. You have the, the rotational energy has to come at the end. Because if I try to rotate right out of the gate, if I rotate right out of the gate, I'm throwing the ball, right? If I spin my body around, I'm throwing the ball because I know if, if I'm squared up here and then I decide to move forward, I'm not going to throw hard. I need to move first before rotation. That's why we all hear coaches say he's flying open, you know, he's pulling off. You'll hear it even with hitters. That what's, that's one of the biggest things you hear from a coaching perspective is you're flying open, you're pulling off. 
that means you're starting rotation too early. At the end of the day, that's what it means. The coach says you're flying open. That meant you went into rotation too early. A coach, you know, if you got in a good long stride and then last minute you pulled open and threw, coach wouldn't say you're flying open. He says you're flying open when you start to rotate too early. So that tells you right there, rotation must come late in the movement, right? Hitters and throwers and pitchers. So we're not flying open. So how do we do that? We're going to, because we start closed, and that's the reason we start closed, so we can add in rotation, because if we started open, we wouldn't really have any rotation to add in. So we're going to start closed, and then from there we got to learn how to hold the closed position in the trunk. As the lower half starts to move the center of mass, the access point forward to build momentum, and then into landing, the hips are going to start the rotational movement, and then the upper body is going to follow. And that's why studies show that the drive leg powers whole body rotation. So there's an exact study that showed that. The drive leg powers whole body rotation, meaning if your back leg, it's the only leg on the ground, it's pushing you forward. It's preventing you from being stuck in an access point. It's pushing you forward. And then what it does is you're going to trigger rotation by opening your front foot. It's going to push through the rotation of the pelvis or to power the rotation of the pelvis. And if the trunk stays closed, then that's going to accelerate like a, a spinning top, the acceleration of the trunk. So the, the lower leg is actually best at even power and rotation. It's going to do two things. The low leg's going to power momentum. It's going to power rotation. So think about it. If you're really good at optimizing the linear momentum and then optimizing the rotational movement, you have a really good back leg. So the back leg is doing a really good job of moving you down the mound and powering pelvis rotation to power both the linear and rotational energy and create the curved linear motion at the end with the ball to the release point. So why I invented the trunk accelerator. So I know this looks silly and looks like an exoskeleton, but what it's doing is it's teaching you how to build in the linear movement. Because when I put it on, and I typically put it on behind my back, kind of like this, and it pops my elbow up to here. You'll see the guys wearing it right, and it locks me in. Okay, when I do this, what it does is because it locked my arm in, now if I rotate early, I throw off target. I will throw across my body or the ball will fly out and throw that way. I won't throw it to the target. So what it does is it makes me hold this back to the last minute. After I create the linear momentum and the rotational power of the pelvis rotation, then I release my trunk. So now my rotation is adding to the linear energy. If I let it go early, like we said, if I let it go early, boom, I'm going to throw the ball off. The reason that happens is, is when most people throw early, what they'll do is they'll drag their arm. They'll leave their arm back longer to allow the arm to continue or to stay on plane towards the target. But when you don't allow that and it stays locked in, like with the trunk accelerator, you'll throw off target. So it's forcing you through the device to hold your trunk closed longer, not to fly open, and teach you how to last minute release the trunk. And then, because it's not letting you rotate early, you have to get better at the other parts of the body that are driving that energy, like the leg, the back leg, to create more power to release the trunk later with more energy, and that's why we call it the trunk accelerator. So that device is actually helping you optimize the linear to rotational energy, or the curved linear energy, by not allowing you to do something like create a flaw which is drag your arm. And because we know when you do that, it might allow you to rotate early and keep, still keep the ball in plane, but it's super hard on your arm. It's where most of the injury is coming from. And that's why organizations that are teaching players to accelerate in rotation, more than likely is forcing the arm to hyperangulate or to drag behind the back. So if they're telling you, hey, who cares if we fly open? Just go hard, go, you know, go early then you're going to have dragging arms and then you're pushing, unfortunately, you're pushing players into injury. You're pushing pitchers or throwers into injury. So when the arm, and, and to fix that, we want to know that when the arm initially can pull back, but when we go into trunk rotation, the arm elbow comes up and can go into layback so the trunk can go forward. But that brings up another point. What causes the arm to lay back? Rotational energy wouldn't cause the arm to lay it back. That's what causes the arm to fly up. Layback is another product of linear energy. So if someone says, 
they're a rotational pitcher and they have layback, they're not just a rotational pitcher. They're a linear to rotational pitcher because the layback is receiving the forces of the trunk going forward or the momentum going forward, which is pulling the arm back and then releasing the arm forward. So that's another linear movement of the kinetic chain. So what are the linear movements? The linear movements are obviously the back leg pushing the pelvis forward, okay? And we, there's a whole um, video I did on how the back leg is responsible for creating momentum. You need to learn that. The other linear movement is at landing, the trunk going forward as opposed to just rotation. And then the other one is the arm laying back because it's allowing the trunk to go forward. Those are all the linear components. So to have those, to have a long stride or have a decent stride, have the back leg creating that, which is what is happening unless you're falling to the ground, to have your trunk moving forward, not just spinning, to have your arm laying back, that means you're a linear and ultimately a linear to rotational pitcher. So I'm hoping you're seeing the science here and you're understanding how this is working. At the end of the day, we're trying to optimize both. So the goal is, is in the linear movement through the back leg, through the trunk, is to peak as much energy forward as we can. And then if we, in rotation, we can peak, peak as much energy in rotation as we can and ultimately have them come together at the end, then like the whip effect or like a, a rotating whip effect, we're gonna get the peak of energy. And that's the goal. The goal is to get the peak of energy. So how will we get to the peak of the energy? Well, the hips are gonna peak and the legs are gonna peak and pushing us forward and in rotation. So that's gonna create a peak as this delays because we want this to stabilize and fully open, which will help it stabilize before this rotates because then this will have a stable base to rotate faster. And, and because it delayed back, it's gonna pull that energy forward, right? Because there's elasticity between the muscles here. It's gonna pull that energy forward and it's gonna peak again above the lower half energy as the arm lays back and then it's gonna break and that's what your posterior chain does, your, your landing leg does. And then your arm's gonna to wanna to go forward and then it's gonna peak at the end. That's where all that energy comes together and gets into the ball. And it uses that kinematic sequence that we just went through of a linear to rotational sequence. So if you're not optimizing the rotational energy and you are the linear energy with the rotational energy and you're just trying to optimize the rotational energy, you're cutting off a lot of energy you can create because if anything, you're probably trying to keep this axis point very static and stable just so you can spin. So you're losing all that energy and the perceived velocity of moving closer to the hitter if you're a pitcher. And so you're leaving a lot of velocity, a lot of perceived velocity on the table. The other thing is you could be hyperangulating your arm, dragging your arm, creating all your energy. So I don't understand why people would say there's an argument to be rotational over linear and rotational. At the end of the day, you should want to be both. It's the hardest way to throw. It's the healthiest way to throw. And it gets you as a pitcher closer to the hitter. So it creates more perceived velocity. To me, it is the only way to throw. And if you really want to be good at this game, you got to learn how to do it as best you can because you'll need all the help you get if you want to play at a high level of the game. So I hope that helps. You know, if you want to learn more about the trunk accelerators and how they can help that process, topvelocity.net slash TX. I got other great devices for it. The Stride Accelerator teaches you the lower half, plus all of our training programs, all of our levels of training, develop the body to do this well and teach you the biomechanical components through our biomechanical system. All these things we have is to teach you how to do this. So I hope that helps you understand the science here and the arguments behind rotational linear and how it works. If you have any questions, leave it here. Subscribe, follow us. Uh, we've got a lot more good stuff coming. Thanks for watching.